Rob Panetta, welcome to the podcast, mate. Thanks, mate. Uh, How thank you been? You. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Trying to uh, look after myself. We're catching up on a Friday afternoon, so I don't know how much I'll be looking after myself tonight. But uh, no, nah, I'm starting to have started to get into these like morning smoothies and a good friend Ooh. of mine sent across like 20, 22 different ingredients smoothies as beetroot in it and uh, all I've sorts been of experimenting. Stuff. Yeah, so I've been mixing it up and uh, been been pretty good. But what about yourself? Yeah, I've been keeping busy. Uh, I know we've been trying to catch up with coffee and that, um, but we've both been super busy. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't. We, there's no excuse for us. Like we only live ten minutes away from each other, so yeah, we've got to get on it, mate. It's the dad life, mate. The the kids are keeping us busy. So. Yeah, a hundred percent. No, I love it, mate. Well, um. Getting into the sort of the, the property side of things, and I know you've 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 started to build out your portfolio and, and well on your journey, and obviously working as a buyer's agent, you you work with clients every day to help them build out their portfolio. I guess if you had your own sort of philosophy around building out a portfolio, what would it look like? Well, that's a great question. Um, I would say my philosophy would be to building out a portfolio. If I had one word to describe it, it would be diversify. You got to diversify your portfolio. You can't have like all your assets in the same class, in the same location. So it's pretty much not putting all your eggs in one basket. That's uh, what I would do. Yeah. Um, but other than that, what I do find super important and buyers need to understand this is that property is a long-term investment. That they need to have the right structure in place from the beginning. So getting your finances in order is essential and having a game plan from where, where you are now in life and where you want to be in the future. Everyone should have that goal in mind, like nail those things and you're pretty much 80% of the way there. Um, and the other 20% is pretty much just choosing the right property for you. Um, I think you'd know a, a thing or two about creating a game plan yourself wouldn't you <laughs> yeah something like that yeah no i totally yeah. agree i think it's um, yeah, i think you might know a thing or two about that <laughs> definitely about the the longer term for me it's something that yeah. um you know i wish i really sort of sat down and played out and did some scenarios and examples when i first started because i went a bit crazy at the start and kind of just bought whatever i found um and you know really you can achieve your goals with uh, yeah within two to five properties, most people sort of need. And so it's really important to make the right decision on each one of those and not to make a rush decision like, like I did. So um, Look, yeah. I want to add on, to, on the back of that, like, like I see ads on Facebook and Instagram telling you, oh, you can apply this strategy. You can make amount, this amount of capital growth. Like it's all, it's all like fluff, all bullshit. Like to be frank, they're selling you a dream. That's not, not a reality. Like each individual, individual person has different circumstances they're in different stages of life um their buying process they've got different budgets um different goals in mind so it's not it's not a simple strategy where one size fits all um each client that i take on we create a tailored strategy for them to suit their brief and their circumstances like i know for me um personally my circumstances, I have a young family. I have two kids under two. So it's pretty interesting having two kids, yeah. Um, so I'm already planning how I'm going to set up my kids for the future. So by the time they're 18, they both have a place of their own. That's really important to me. So my strategy is really going to be tailored on from now to then, how am I going to best achieve that? And with a property portfolio game plan, it gives me a 30 year tailored strategy to really dictate um, when I can make these purchases with the right amount of risk involved and for my situ personal situation. It, it's, but it still allows me to still, uh, live my life, go on holidays, buy a drink, my dream car, or even plan for a retirement and live off my passive income from, yeah, from yeah. my property. So, you touched yeah. on a really good point there in terms of you know different life stages and pe people's yeah. goals and aspirations might change as they start to shift and, and move through life and yeah as you said if you got two kids under two you um you know you, you could have gone from a really it's a struggle it's a struggle 
Oh yeah, exactly. And, you know, prepping for that and what, what are impacts to incomes and all those sorts of things are really important to just yeah. lay it all out and understand what, what the whole picture is going to look like. Now, yeah, 100%. Um, if you had a chance to go back and talk to, to young Rob, what would you go back and tell yourself if you could? Um, ooh, well, that's a fair question. Um, what I'll tell myself is just to back myself, like trust your gut. Um, don't let anyone tell you you can't do this or you can't do that. You, you know what's ultimately best for you. You're, like your mindset plays a huge part in, in life and, and in property. So I, I now aim for the sky. There's no limit for what I can do. Um, and without taking risks, there's no reward. You've got to spend money to make money. So all these things apply to building out a portfolio. Um, when I first started, because if I knew back then what I knew now, it would be a whole different ball game. Like, I guess you need to go through the process to, to learn. And now that's part of the reason why I became a buyer's agent um, was to help others who are not quite sure what, what they're doing and help them buy homes because it can get quite time consuming and stressful. So uh, if I can help alleviate some of the pressure for them, then that's great. Yeah. 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 I think that's really important. And, and you mentioning there, you know, if you, if you, knew what you knew now and you could go back and change everything you would i mean what what were some of those mistakes you made along the journey i mean you don't have to get into specifics on exactly your, exactly your portfolio but was there any sort of mistakes that you wanted to to share with the listeners or, or what did that sort of journey look like well yeah well that's a good question i can i can tell you a specific that mistake that i actually made in my first purchase i remember buying my first home was it's actually still my principal place of residency um, at the moment. So I went to auction, had three auctions to go that day, but this particular house was three bed, one bath, one car, 1960 old home, um, brick veneer. And it was on like a 767 square meter slope block, just to put into perspective. Um, the asking guide was around 480 to 520. If I remember correctly. Yeah. And so we go to auction, about 20 people there. Auctioneer makes his pitch, starts asking for bids. No one bids. And I'm like, what's going on here? Like, um, I was wondering what's actually wrong with this property. Um, so we end up it ends up passing in. We uh end up negotiating after the auction and um we actually secure it for 515. So what I took away from the purchase and the mistake I think I made was not doing my due diligence, getting a building and pest inspection on the property. Because when I got the keys, I realized the whole house needed to be underpinned to stop it from sliding and causing more cracks in the house. And that was 20K right off the bat that we didn't account for. But luckily my house has doubled in value since then, but it would be handy in terms of extra money to renovate or it would have been handy actually to negotiate the price down from the defects that would have been found in the report. So if I have one lesson for buyers in general and all my clients, that would be to do their due diligence and to save you lots of money down the track. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big yeah. one, especially um, if there's no other bidders putting their hands up, you still have started to have that moment of, okay, well, what, what is going on here and what, what haven't we done? Yeah, definitely building in past and getting the, the contracts done and, you know, going yeah, out. Yeah, super um, important, yeah. Yeah, I heard something once, was, you know, someone spends more time looking at vacuums than they do at a property they're about to buy. And it's true, like someone might spend two two or three hours looking at vacuums online or in a store and they might go and open home for half an hour once before they buy it. So, um, yeah, I think that due diligence piece is, is so important. Yeah, it's, it's key, yeah, especially in negotiations. Um, it can really help with uh, bringing down the price. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so walk me through the process of you becoming a, a buyer's agent, mate. Did you, um, have you always loved property to come after that, that passion for property came into play? Um, were you working in the space previously? Like what made you sort of take that, that final step to start your own business? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, the idea of uh, Lux Buyers Agents actually originated in COVID. Um, I'd been working in construction on, on a pretty good income, to be honest, but um, thinking like 
can I actually see myself doing this for the rest of my life? And the answer was simply no, I can't. But I'll, I will take it back to when I actually first, my, first bought my first property, like back in 2016 when I, I was instantly hooked. Like you, you get the property bug as soon as you buy a house, you're like, oh, like, <laughs> give me more, give me more. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'd be constantly each week checking auction results, like checking clearance rates, where my house was growing in value. Can I rent it out? Um, can I buy investment property? So my, my mind was just constantly thinking about property and how I can create wealth through it. And in time, like I had the chance to help family or friends, like I did help them bid at auction, negotiate. So I, like I always, since since I bought a house, I, I've just constantly had a passion for it. And um, yeah. Um, but in terms of um, uh, what happened in COVID, uh, I had a family member actually pass away um, all of a sudden, just out of the blue. Gosh. Um, we've seen him the day before, yeah. Um, he was perfectly healthy and the next day he was gone. So we we'll, were we'll just all in, all in actually shock. And I just had a light bulb moment, just like instantly and thought to myself, well, like life is actually really short. So from this point on, like I'm going to do what I want to do and what makes me happy and what I'm passionate about. And that's when Lux Buyers Agents was originated. I instantly booked the course in, got my license and now I actually run my own um, company, so which I love, um, as my earning potential is not capped. So, like, I, I won't be working construction. I was doing what sixty hours a week, so it, it, it takes a toll on your body. So now I want to use my mind a bit more, <laughs> um, and it's flexible to my lifestyle. Now having young kids, so uh, I can sort of work when I want. So that's what. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah, that's awesome, mate. I, I love that. And, and you, you're so right. I think for me, it was um, it was having my daughter, you know, I kind of remember having this moment where I looked at her and I just said, that was me 29 years ago. Uh, I just couldn't believe how quick quick life goes and, um, you know, how, how, this, how this journey rolls and you, you spend 10 years working for someone else and it was time to um, jump out and start your own process. So, yeah, it's... Sorry, yeah, you're, you're, just making, you're just making that other person more rich and you're just <laughs> what are you doing you're just uh i don't know you're just exactly. going off the flow yeah and i'm so sorry to hear about your loss it's, it's pretty devastating news to yeah especially you know out of nowhere and then being perfectly healthy I'm, yeah it's it's a it's a terrible thing but i'm i'm glad yeah. in a way that you found a, a positive outcome or experience from it so i think i think that's great and um i love that you, you're doing what you love uh, now, mate, there's a there's a thousand and one of them out there, but if you had sort of one favorite property, one liner, what would it be? Oh, um, well, I wouldn't say this is necessarily a property one liner, but it can definitely apply to property. Um, and that is, do not let any obstacles stop you. Where where there are obstacles, there are also great opportunities. So, um, yeah, oh, we're seeing that in the property market at the moment. Uh, a lot of people are fearful of buying right now. Interest rates are going up and everyone's just panicking. Whereas six months ago, everyone was fearful of missing out on a property. But if you're an investor, I think you really need to think to yourself, are you buying for the short term or are you buying for the long term? As property wealth is created through the long term. So property that people were buying six months ago, they were getting mediocre houses on on terrible land like and they're, and they're way overpriced. Whereas now there's much less competition, greater value in houses on bigger blocks. And as buyers agents, we're getting access to a lot more stock with better houses than say six months ago when everyone was buying. But um, also mainstream media plays a part, part in it as well. Like has a lot to do with the change in the market. They write all these articles that are not, not necessarily true. Um, their job is to sell articles so um, yeah they put headlines out like property boom is over market's going to crash oh my god panic panic <laughs> and yeah people <laughs> people feed into that but but if you speak historically when interest rates have gone up house prices have still continued to rise in most states so my parting advice to savvy investors is don't wait um, the time to buy is now and 
you can thank me in the long run. Um, yeah. No, I love it, mate. And um, yeah, I'm taking advantage of it myself at the moment, looking to um, get get in while the, the iron is the iron isn't as hot as usual, and it's definitely yeah. You can yeah, great opportunities right now. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think it it's a great time. To stay out of the media hysteria. I mean, we're still at low. We're still half of what the interest rate is today. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, like in 2009, it was still two percent higher than what we actually are now. So, yeah. So I don't uh, know. People, people are just going nuts. <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah. I think you know it. It's it's mostly the media sort of hyping up things, but. Yeah. That's no, great, man. It's always a pleasure to have a chat and uh, we definitely should organise that that coffee sometime soon. But I'd love to, we need to get you back on the podcast at some stage when uh, I come up with a, a fresh set of questions. Are you keen to come back? Oh, uh, absolutely. Love, uh, love chatting to you as always. So yeah, whenever you want me, uh, I'll be there. All right, mate. Sounds great. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Jordan.